Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are joining Yegor here in orbit of the moon with Project Lifeboat, as he is about to complete his one full year in space, just uh, several hours out. So we're going to start prepping him for his uh, return home, and I guess the first part of that is to make sure that, yep, Kevin has life support in his return craft. Let's so make sure his resource rates are normal, good. So, we're going to get him out of that cabin. Oh, of course, you took the wrong door. Good for you. Alright. And it's EVA time, so we'll just uh, try to gently glide him back. Oh, wow, look at that. There's home, Yegor. What do you think of that, dude? Okay. <laughs> I may have just messed up the perspective there a bit. There we go. That's pretty awesome. Alright, let's... <laughs> I actually don't need any of that... Uh, stuff to get him back over here to the pod. Grab. We're glad you're still able to move your arms and legs after a year <laughs> of captivity. I mean, isolation in orbit of the moon in this very unique prison. Sorry, dude. Alright, we're going to transfer over as much of these resources as we can. No, you belong over here, just so I can keep things straight. Out, 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 in. We'll pin that one for now. Oh, it takes a long time to move that stuff over. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to feel bad about leaving this completely empty. Uh, it has served its purpose quite well. Alright. Oops, you were supposed to... yeah. In. In. Actually, I should be pinning that one. Oh, that one's... Oh, it's got a little oxygen in it. Whatever. We'll we'll bring that over also. Why not? Uh, oh, okay. Looks like everything here is full and locked. We can go ahead and unlock these resources. Good enough. And we'll get rid of you. And that's that. Now, to prevent any further resource drain, we're going to go ahead and undock. I guess we have to do that one from this one. There we go. I am, of course, focused on the wrong one. RCS. Back us away, Yegor. I bet he is really excited to be coming home. This is a really, really long mission. <laughs> Alright, now we'll go ahead and start getting his node set up. Guess we can probably do this right about here at our periapsis. No, that's a little off. Why not? All right, and we'll just get him set up for a free return. Oh come on, you're gonna do this to me? All right, give me just a minute. To mess with this note. I'll pick you guys back up in a second. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 1,060 meters per second seems a bit weird, but uh, we've got it in spades, so we're just not going to worry about it. I actually think I do still have some reserve fuel that is still locked. Yep. So, this shouldn't be any actual issues whatsoever. Alright, and our burn time is in two hours. Goodbye, Project Lifeboat. You've been a world of fun. An exercise in boredom, I'm sure. Poor Yegor. Okay. Coming up on seven minutes of this burn time. Let's make sure our engine is activated. There we go. Uh, I don't really see this be being more than a five minute burn, but I'm not 100%. How many ignitions? We have two ignitions left on this AJ-10. Eek. 
So fire it early. Yeah, all right, I'd rather be early than late. Uh, I'm sure it's all edged. Yep, here we go. Yeah, burn time's like three minutes. Great. Well, don't have much of a choice but to just let it run, I suppose. Probably unlock those two just to make sure I don't want to be shy in ignition when I don't have to be. Oh yeah, oh we got plenty. We're we're gonna do just fine. Well being off on the timing did certainly change things. We now have a periapsis of about 5 million, which was not at all what we wanted. So we're going to have to make an adjustment, and that will probably use our last ignition. And that sucks. I kind of like having that in reserve, you know? Let me see if I can't set up a node while I'm switching back and forth between screens frantically. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. Let's be here-ish somewhere at maneuver. That's in like 15 seconds. So we gotta hurry up and <laughs> plot this. Oh yeah, that doesn't do me any good at all. That might. Ah, fine. All right. At least now I know which way I need to deflect. Yeah. Oh, come on, KSP. Quit goofing off on me here. Wow. <laughs> I, I love those jumps that it makes. Three. Fifty-two. That's something worth shooting at. It's 96 meters per second. I think it's well worth our last burn. It's supposed to be in nine minutes. We're just going to do it a little sooner. Because it'll actually be more efficient when we are closer to the moon. Thank you, oh, birth effect. I, th I don't know if that applies when you're not going straight prograde or retrograde. Okay. Wow, that... It's frame drops. Okay. You're killing me here, Smalls. Uh, I should probably be here to light the engine. Because we only have one of these. Light it. We're lit. Alright. Careful, careful, careful. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's a collision course. <laughs> All right, we're going to adjust that once we're a little further from the moon. We've got plenty of RCS fuel, although this engine is now junk. No ignitions remaining. All right, Yegor, don't worry, man. We're going to get you home, okay? I'm not going to ditch you in space for a year for no d good damn reason. So... Where would the moon be? Oh, well, we've changed SOI. It's not like it matters so much anymore. All right. Let's make these adjustments, shall we? Before we kill poor Yegor. <laughs> wow. 84, that's probably a bit high if we're trying to do this all in one pass. 29 is certainly too low. 50, a bit low, but we'll give it a shot. So yeah, considering how this burn's going to take nothing. All right. 
right. Let's just watch that periapsis over there to the right. Sixty-six. We'll go with that and we'll shut down. Turn off our RCS system. All right. Make sure our okay. All of our life support here is in great shape. What's TAC life support telling us we have about a month left? One year, three hundred sixty-five days. Well, that's not. It's really we've been there three hundred sixty-five days and six hours. So way to go, Yegor! You have just broken the one-year mark. This should be very interesting. All right, let's get you home there, buddy. All right, time you warp. It'll be a couple of days before he comes back, and I really wonder where we're going to put down. I really wonder if Yegor will be able to stand under his own power when he gets there. That doesn't look too bad. I mean, clouds are still being glitchy. Oh. Okay, well. Way to go, Scattered, for giving me a heart attack. That was certainly interesting. <sighs> I'm trying real hard to fix this, guys. I promise you. <laughs> it, it is just not the best, I know. All right, and what's that, 45 some odd minutes away? Very interesting. Oh, that's gorgeous. That looks so much better. Wow. Okay, let's start prepping things for detachment. Oh, I'm in docking mode. How did that happen? I guess I must have clicked it, huh? Alright. And so we're going to just make sure, in case we have to do another pass... We want as much up here in the command pod and out of the service module as we can. Let's pin you and bring up this. Uh, in, 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 out, out, out. Good. We're good. All right, make sure our batteries are charged fully, perfect, and let's just get in a little closer. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a nighttime re-entry. That is less than ideal. And it's probably time to just go ahead and separate our service module. Goodbye, fair friend. It has been a wonderful experience hanging out with you for a year. Alright, and we'll go ahead and bring these in. Now that the sun is setting behind us. Go ahead and unlock the HTP in these thrusters here. Okay, good. My primary thrusters are still working. All right, everybody, cross your fingers. We're going to try to do a single pass free return, which is something I don't think we've actually been able to accomplish before. We've always had to uh, sweep around again. So here's hoping. And thunk. There's the atmosphere. 
It is now being considered in our rendering. Oh, that is... That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm glad we turned around to look at that. Although I'm really sorry this is going to be a nighttime re-entry. Wow. All right, back to business. Let's keep this pointed retrograde, shall we, Jaeger? Yeah, there goes the service module. Now that camera shake will really startle the hell out of you. There's something out there. Yep. Never mind. Nothing out there is still left. All right, and a blader has begun to ablate. Still seeing about ten and a half kilometers per second. All right, Jaeger. And the sparks have started to fly. Trying to keep careful eye on that uh, apoapsis. I'd really like to not take a second lap, although we're still descending. In about four seconds, we will be climbing again, but we've still got a lot of atmosphere to work our way out of. I'm just really hoping we don't skip all the way around again. I'd really like to get this done in just one, you know, one and done. I would like to kind of figure out at what altitude something of this relative tonnage can do just a single pass free return trajectory and not explode unlike the uh, Donegal test capsule that uh, ran out of battery power got off angle and uh, exploded All right, yeah we're climbing pretty quickly but uh, still slowing down to, uh, apogee still 10 million oh. I touched the controls. That was a mistake. Oh, come on. Damn it. <laughs> I think we're going to have to go around again. We only really bled off about uh, three kilometers per second so far. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. It's still showing about a two hour orbit period. Two and a half. I, I think we're going to have to end up going around again. Not entirely certain on that, but actually, let's see if uh, now that we're out of some of this thickness, if we can angle ourselves into it a bit. And let's drop that angle and see if we can't push ourselves lower. Yeah, no, our, our deceleration is pretty insignificant at this point. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, Jaeger's gonna be fine. He's just gonna be in orbit an extra, you know, two and a half hours. Which really, after being stuck up there for a year, this is probably going to be the longest two and a half hours of his entire existence. Alright, now we can get those panels back out just to make sure running out of battery would be a huge problem. 
Yeah. Bummer. Sorry, Jaeger. Alright, we can try to speed up some of this and get ourselves as quickly around to his next breaking pass as we can, which I'm sure is going to bring him home just fine. Dunk. Ooh, pull those back in quick, just in case. And, you know, I, I'd rather get the money for those back, Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not cheap, but I certainly am. All right, they're just really pretty. Just saying. Interesting that we can see. I don't. There's no lights on this thing. So the fact that we just get this one patch of clouds following us is kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just gotta put up with glitches like this. And look at something else, like Jupiter. <laughs> We're being chased by the cotton monsters. Alright. Come on, Jaeger. Let's bring it home, man. G-load is getting a little heavy. Oh boy, nine G's. I'm sorry, Yegor. <laughs> okay, looks like we're starting to taper off now. Eight and a half, eight. Yeah, G-load falling. I almost forgot to arm the parachutes, but they're armed now, so as long as nothing absolutely tragic happens, Jaeger's going to be just fine. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's just pitch black. Entirely, entirely pitch black. <laughs> so I do apologize for that. I know this isn't much to look at for you guys. Uh... Nope. Yeah, there we go. We'll take it up just a bit. Tell Yegor just to go ahead and hold retrograde. This should be pretty easy for him. He's done this, uh, shit twice before? So yeah, I think he was one of our uh, the first ones to successfully uh, orbit the moon, and he was the second pilot to land on the moon. So this is his third lunar trip, making Yegor easily the most experienced pilot we have now. Sorry, Val, you've been dethroned. Although I guess uh, Alice would be his next rival because she did a lunar orbiter and then a lunar landing. Whereas Val has just, I mean on two separate missions, Val has orbited the moon and landed on it all in one mission. Alright, we can probably turn off our SAS toggle and our RCS toggle. So we're just going to be in free fall for a while. A long while. So we'll just speed this up until, oh, there go the drogues. Aren't they cute, everybody? They're just tiny. This seems like a ridiculous size for parachutes, let's just be honest. That is absolutely ridiculous. We should get actual size drogue chutes. <laughs> or at least make them the same size as the actual parachutes. They'll probably deploy here in just a second or two. There go the primaries. And the drogues are unfurled. I mean really, is there a good reason why the drogue chutes can't be that same size. That just <laughs> They're so adorable. So cute. Alright, and 900 meters from the water that we cannot see. Uh, 
I guess we did have lights on for that thing. How interesting. Alright. I'm sure Jaeger is very happy to see all of this parachutes and water and to feel the pull of gravity. It's been a very long year and two days for him. <laughs> But he has done it. He has now spent more time in space than anyone else, and we can study his physiology to determine what a long-term mission would look like for other Kerbals based on uh, how brittle he is now. I'm sure this impact here at 6.8 meters per second with the water will probably break a hip or something. It's bound to be really, really uncomfortable. And splash down. Alright, it looks like we actually have water back now because it's not invisible. Way to go, Jaeger. Welcome home. We'll be sure to get a helicopter out there to you soon enough. That's going to do it for this uh, today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out, and I will see all of you in the next one. Until then, see you later.